Welcome back everyone to another episode of The Silver Skillet. Today with me is my boss, the Speaker of the House. His boss, Mrs. Speaker of the House, Roxanne O'Brien and Bill O'Brien. I can't thank you guys enough for being here. The Speaker uh, didn't get to be Speaker because he's not smart. He knows that who the cook is in the house, so we want to make sure we have her here to make us something we can all eat. Well, you're right, Peter, about the <laughs> Speaker of my house. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and we all know how that works. So today, Roxanne, what are you going to prepare for us? Uh, seafood enchiladas. Seafood enchiladas. My only chance to have Mexican food is when I make it, because he won't go to a Mexican <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> well, see. Absolutely true. Well, then you bring it home to him. <laughs> uh, I, just so I don't forget, of course, we can't thank enough uh, Jerry Roth and uh, GM Roth Company for this beautiful kitchen they supply. And uh, I think we're doing them some favors, too, because people are starting to find out where it is. So while Roxanne's going to start going, we should give us the orders of what we're going to prepare. And then, as always, the speaker going to talk about some of the business that we do up in Concord. And um, so how should we start? Uh, we need to chop the onions first so we can saute them. That's my job. Let me go ahead and start <laughs> chopping. So, Mr. Speaker, we have um, you know a few weeks left. To, for the people that aren't really familiar, what would you say... When do you think this session will kind of come to an end this year? I think it's probably going to come to an end. Oh, the first week of June or so, maybe we'll be lucky and, and uh, get things done by then. Uh, we're going to finish up most of the sessions where we're directly dealing with the legislation by the middle to near the end of, of uh, May, and then uh, committee of conferences where we have committees of the Senate to, to go over changes in the bills. And that should be done by first week of June. So what should the citizens look for, you think, on your radar? What's some of the hot bills that are going to come up this time? Well, some of the bills that we're working on that we're real encouraged that we're going to get out and be important um, are voter ID bills. The Senate has sent us one over. We have some ideas on ways we think we can improve it. And we'll get those ideas uh, into our version of the bill and discuss it with the uh, Senate. Uh, we have a committee that is hard at work on some final changes and some important changes to um, the public pension law in uh, New Hampshire. One, they'll take us to what we refer to as a defined contribution um, system, more like a 401k system. And uh, we think we're going to have uh, an opportunity to get that to the House floor, some important changes, and, and really make some progress in that area. Another area that we, we think we're going to be able to um, get to a point of agreement with the uh, Senate is um, on some constitutional amendments, some deal with, with uh, taxes and borrowing, and other deals with education funding reform. Um, we're having great discussions with the Senate, particularly on that last area. Well, you're the boss. What do we need to do now? Well, we're going to saute the onions in butter, although I don't usually cook with butter, so I kind of cheat and use the butter flavored spray. You know, I get used to that during my. Pam and I, for every um, Lent, we do the Nutrisystem. So you try to cut out all the butter stuff and everything. And it, it, I get used to it. It, it. it works out well. It does. All right. Now, while we're waiting for the onions to saute, and then we'll, we'll be adding the other ingredients, as I'm sure. So w do you think that um, there'll be a lot of committees of conference? And we should probably tell people what that is, because they yeah, yeah, so what happens, Pete, as you know, is that uh, we'll pass a version of a bill and we'll send it over to the Senate and they'll pass an, another bill and send it to us. And then the, the uh, Senate and the House will work on each other's bills. Sometimes a bill will come from the Senate and we'll say, this does it. This is, this is exactly where the language should read. Other times a bill will come to us and we'll say, well, it didn't handle this well or we see another problem uh, on the bill and we'll amend it. When we do amend it, we'll send it over to the Senate and the Senate will look at the amendment and at that point, they'll decide, um, are we ready to go with this? Or do we want to talk to them about why they did it? What did they find out? Or do we not agree with, with their position? And so you set up a committee. The speaker appoints uh, members to that committee. Uh, the Senate president um, appoints members to that committee. And they'll sit down and, and try to reach agreement, try to see if they can go back to their respective bodies and say, you know, we discussed it. And this is what we recommend to you is, is either compromise language or, you know, the Senate may come up with some language, we listen to their explanation and say, well, that makes sense. Uh, and once we get to compromise language, both bodies will then pass the compromise language. Sometimes it happens you go into a, uh, a committee of conference and the two sides just can't agree. 
in which case the, uh, the bill then it becomes law. And, and that, in general, I think a lot of people, at least in my opinion, what we do in New Hampshire isn't a lot different than what they do in the federal government. It's the same process. That, that part of it is. I mean, there's one important difference between uh, the New Hampshire legislature and, and Congress, which you all know about, and other legislatures, at least insofar as I've talked to other House speakers about how their bodies are run. And, and the big difference is that in Congress and most legislatures, uh, it, it is restrictions on the number and type of bills that members can file. And there's the ability of leadership within the House of Representatives in other states, Senate in other states, um, to um, kill bills without them coming to the House floor. So if, if uh, a committee chairman or the House Speaker sees a bill and they say, you know, this isn't the bill that's, that uh, is, is one that I think is going to pass, or maybe even not one that I want. Um, they can kill it. New Hampshire is really different that way. Every member gets to fill, file as many bills as they want to. <laughs> I know uh, that. Uh, yeah, and some of them come across as bills that, that, let's face it, just aren't central to the way most of us think. And uh, that member can get it into a committee. That committee has to have a public hearing on it. And eventually the committee has to report it back out to the House for final action. And, and uh, if that member, if it's only one member of the 400, wants to have a debate on, on it, the, the member can require a debate, get up and tell the whole house. Why, <clears throat> why for example, as one bill was filed this session by a Democratic representative, um, Meriwether Lewis should be exhumed. And, and uh, you know, my, many of us would think, and I think I'd submit to you rightfully so, that that's not really central to what's going on in New Hampshire and, and any sort of realistic agenda. But it, it is really something very strong about the New Hampshire legislature because it shows respect for the constituents who sent that representative to us that if, if through that representative, presumably you want an issue heard, we're going to hear it. We're going to, we're going to vote on it. And I don't think people realize that, that how lucky we are. And it's just that it's nice to have the right people in charge of something that big of an apparatus because it can go the other way, as we saw. Yeah, it can. It can. And, and there's a strength to it. And, and as, as uh, the majority party this, this term, and as any party that's in the majority, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, in that sort of setting, you, sh you sure take your knocks at times. Because all it takes is a paper to line up you know, a few of those really silly bills and say, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing those bills? Well, we're not doing them because we made a choice to do them. We're doing them because that's the system in New Hampshire. It's a citizen legislature. We were open to citizens' ideas, and and uh, you know, I'd have it no other way. Even though you know I've I've had to answer questions throughout this term on on uh, some fairly silly bills. So, Madam Chef, what are we we're ready to add in our ingredients? Which, we are. Which are what today? Well, the onions have, are cooked now too. They're sort of transparent, and then we're going to add the um, crab meat after we I turn the heat off. Now, did, did you? Is this from a can, or did you get it? This is fresh. Crab meat. In the market. And um, shrimp that's and been shrimp. chopped and deveined. So it's cooked shrimp. Yes, it's cooked. And then Kobe cheese. Where was this during Lent when I needed it on Friday? Actually, I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We always have had something for fish. That's the thing I was, I've been saying. I think there's one near you in Milford. There's no fish market in Nashville. You believe that? That, that, is, that surprising. is surprising. There is a good one in Milford. Yeah. Um, it was, it, there was one that had been around for a long time, and um, they decided because they'd become so successful, they'd move it down the street and they became part of a restaurant. And it lost its old time. This is a fish market going and 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 uh, buy the fish there and became just sort of a restaurant where they with a uh, counter, and people didn't really go to it. Turns out that another group came to town, the couple came to town, and moved a new fish market about two or three um, years after that one closed into where the old one had been, then, and it's really prosperous <laughs> again. We, uh, we had one on Main Street um, where the uh, Quiznos is now. It used to be the IHOP for a while, and that, that didn't make it. There's never been a fish, I've been here for 20 something years. Yeah, that, that is surprising. A ways to go, I guess. We should open one up. What do we have to do for you now? Now we're going to um, make the enchiladas. 
Are these wheat tortillas or flour? I, I did, well, the recipe does call for flour tortillas, but I found some enriched, non-enriched wheat flour tortillas because they're healthier. No, I try to do it too, but like, like you said, so the, these look like they're um, the same consistency of regular they're flour. They're a little softer. Because some of those wheat ones sometimes just break up as soon as you touch it. Yeah, they are, they are fragile. So you fold it over in the corners, and then you roll it. Just to keep it from falling out. OK. <laughs> well, let me try that. Now, that part I could do. I could put it right on the plate. <laughs> I'm pretty darn good about that. <laughs> well, I don't know. You, she seemed to go you, kind of fast over there. Maybe you have had a problem with that in you, the past. You, you don't believe I could do <laughs> uh, that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I've been in your house a few times, and I've not even really seen a fork in your hand except when you're eating. So. Well, you probably won't. <laughs> OK, so you've, I, you folded it over this way. And then the ends at this point. You are watching. Uh, what are you just going to say wrong? Gonna See, look throw, at this. Throw down a red card on me. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's going to unroll now. <laughs> Here we go. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a matter of placement. That's unraveling right. like one of my bills. Yeah. No, go I ahead, like Pete, it. You well, make one. All right, let's see. <laughs> all right, let's see what I can do over here. That should work because it's my plate. You can tell there's cheese in there. <laughs> yeah, Pete, this is the moment of truth. He's making his own, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what I did wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Well, he, he folded the um, whole side over. Now, well, see, now he's a, made a burrito, see? He did, looks that's a lot really better. not an enchilada. Yeah, I don't know. I just roll, that's why I said I'm not the roller guy. All right. Let me try it again. Yeah, give it another shot. A little more filling and a not as much filling. fold. So, you know, you could use this as a part-time job to make up for the salary. In a spare time. Yeah. 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 I'm going to need a job after uh, the next term, so this could be it. I think more... Uh, yeah. You don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> By the time the speaker's done, you're going to see him on Wednesday with all these different band-aids <laughs> on his fingers. <laughs> okay, so how am I doing here? This is it? I think you got it. Yeah. I'm a very generous fellow here. There you go. It's not quite as neat as Pete's, but on the other hand, he's a chef and I'm a helper. Well, mine looks small, though. What happened? You didn't put as much in it. See, I didn't want to come on all over the sides. That's OK. It's going in a pan. It's probably easier to do this if uh, it had cooled a little bit more so the cheese doesn't melt. Now you can let me know that. You could actually use the, is it, those are tortillas. You can use them to wipe the spoon too. That's, that's great. I just thought of that. It's just saving your extra napkins to use and no, clean yeah. afterwards. No, that's very green of you. <laughs> so now th this, this is not done. You're going to bake it still. Still going to bake it, yes. We have a sauce to put on it. I was going to say, enchiladas always have a sauce. You know, I share the story. We, Pam and I were just dating still. This is in the early 80s. We're out in California. So we, we go to Tijuana, and I'm excited. I'm going to have enchiladas in Mexico. So I get there, and they, they send this plate over, and these things just look unbelievable. And it looked like there was this really nice dark chili on them with look like almost like a parmesan cheese well customary in mexico the sauce they put on is is a molasses with confectionery really? sugar i was so mad i was in I'm, and I, you know, of course i'm swearing in english but like who would do that it, you know it, it was the inside was like a you know a beef type of thing but with molasses and confectionery sugar on top yeah. And and I guess once I found someone that could talk English, that's how they all do it. So like you'd have to ask not to put that on there. Well, that confirms my prejudice against <laughs> the Mexican food. I know I'm swimming against the, the popular current there, but then you know I do that all the time. <laughs> sure, that's funny that you yeah. But uh, to me, Mexican food is a, is a lot of brown stuff and green stuff and white stuff and cheese. See, if the thing is though, like when you live in California. Then you come back here and have it. Like we have one in town that's called La Coretta. It's authentic. 
Yeah. That's good Mexican food. You know, that's what I've heard. We, we have something over here that just sort of resembles what we think it should be. Look how perfect that one in there. That, that's great. Yeah. Did you really plan that? See, now me, I'd have four more things over here, and I, plus I would have cooked enough for Nashua. Look at this. All right, so what, what, what goes into the sauce, Roxanne? Right? Now we put in the butter. Just the part I don't like to put in. But. <laughs> Is it real butter? Yeah, we'll let that melt first. Um, so I have a wooden spoon. I think they're right in where you are. There you go. That. It's like Herman Monster's spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite Munster episodes. Remember the one where he goes, he wants to go back to his army reunion, so he just has to lose weight. Yeah. And they're all pigging out, and he puts like one little pill on the dish. That's all he gets. And then he tries to cut the pill. And of course, it's squirt sauce, so he doesn't even get that. And he makes his Herman Munster face. <laughs> ah, I love those intelligent shows. So the sauce consists of butter, sour cream, half and half. Um, garlic, salt, and parsley. So it's like a cream sauce. Mm -hmm. And then when we put it in, we're going to bake it for how long? 30 minutes. We have the cheese and the tomatoes, too, a little garnish. So that's the time you have to do the shots of tequila. And you get so so when, when do you put the cheese on? After you've baked it, you, you put it in? Or no, you, go on? you put it on to bake it. Sauce and then cheese, or cheese sauce? Yeah, you put the sauce on and then you put cheese on top. Okay, because I want to know, because it could be, become a point. <laughs> I don't want to go out there. Yeah, like if you're stranded on an island and only with seafood, I guess, right? You might have to. And the problem is, I, in, in this area, I'm, I'm really rather challenged. I went right from Mom to Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it worked out well. I mean, obviously, I, I didn't starve during the transition or, or at any time thereafter. See, now my, my, my mother never cooked really. My father did all the cooking. Really? Same, same thing. Role models, huh? And, it's just, and my father's father was, a, he came over here uh, as the sh um, chef on a, on a ship. And actually, I think I told the story before. My aunt Jackie used to be the head chef at Cape Cod Playhouse. And Kennedy wanted her for his inauguration to cook for the, their meal. Oh, you never told me that. And she's, she was very. Uh, timid and she just didn't, wouldn't do it you know they're huge kennedy people you know yeah. well i told you they call me Petey the republican because none of my family can believe i'm a republican yeah. so well my massachusetts family were all democrats too but they stopped talking to me so <laughs> so that's easier <laughs> that's easier they don't i don't hear the insults or, or otherwise express when i'm not around yeah they, they still do um i haven't got any nasty letters or anything yet but then again i don't affect them yeah so we're putting in the cream, uh, that's half and half, right? Right. And the and it's just sour, sour cream. cream. Just going to heat all this till it gets warm. I'm not going to cook the spoon. So this isn't any particular portion, it's sort of a smidgen of this? No, or? it's it's measured out. Okay. It's all located. Well, she, ha she has it all typed out, which I keep telling her when I'm going to do that. But they'll, they'll end up putting this on camera, on the line for you, for the actual recipe. Oh, that's good so that they can make this on their own. Speaking of Senator Sanborn, he's supposed to come on here and make his um, clam chowder recipe from the draft. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Well, they've actually turned out to be pretty good cooks. And, and, and uh, you know, I've gone up there, eaten some of the things he's put together, and they're very good. Well, I guess he, he's not worried about putting it out. They won something with it, but he put it in Ron Paul's cookbook. We did. So it's public <laughs> knowledge anyway, so yeah. figures. You can go ahead and do it. Yeah, I've never, I've never really asked when I've gone into um, restaurants, and so maybe you guys have. Do, do you, if you go into a nice restaurant and you, and you come across something like a clam chowder, it's really good. Will they generally give you the recipe, or is it? You know, Usually, those curry? things they don't do it. But like, do you, have you ever gone to the um, White Barn Inn in Kennebunk? Yeah. Well, he actually, I bought his. He actually has a school that you can go there, but he has a cookbook and it's exactly what every ingredient, every process. Yeah. So some will. I think the nicer ones too. Good. Have you ever gone into it? I think there's nothing to worry about. Really. 
Magnolias, I think it's oh, called. Well, no, I didn't go to Magnolias. So, you know, they have an Charleston. amazing cookbook. Yeah. It's actually a famous restaurant for down in that area. So you can see probably it's going to be like a nice glaze in there when it's um, keeping it nice and moist in the oven. I know it smells good. That's half the food anyway, isn't it? That's right. That's why it's, I hate when I'm cooking and I have a cold. Now we'll have to put cheese on it. Cheese. I forgot tomatoes too. What would the world do without cheese? I swear I'm part rat. I love cheese. It looks like it might end up to be tasting pretty good now. It's Not too much of the white stuff in the green stuff? No, no, I don't see any refried anything. <laughs> Some tomato spoon. Need a spoon? spoon? It's like it's my own kitchen now. What did you say it's going to take a half hour? 30 minutes at 3.50. speaker brings over our lovely looking dish we're going to be able to serve it and you can see I wish you could smell it again and one thing we have to do with modern technology is add smell to TV but it smells great. great so are you going to serve us it should sit for a couple of minutes I'm going to let it sit a little bit probably be really hard to get it out of there right now it's like so you have to let it sit for to let the cheese harden up yeah, they, they, it says in the recipe to let it sit, so. So we'll let it sit. So, Mr. Speaker, before we um, dive into our seafood enchiladas, is there anything else that people, the citizens, should know about that they should maybe get involved with? Any big bills come up to call up their representatives? or? Well, I think certainly on the constitutional amendments. They're, they're important amendments. They could, they could transform the state. You, know, it's, you and I know, Pete, there's one that would... Uh, require a supermajority, 60% of both the House and Senate, to increase taxes and increase borrowing. That's a way to protect us from what we saw happen over the four years before we came in. When there were you know, over 100 new taxes and fees, and there was 25% increase in, in spending, a lot more borrowing, borrowing to pay operating costs of the government. And, and that couldn't take place without it being um, a, a something that uh, yeah, under this amendment, where 60% of, of the legislature is saying, I'm going, to, I'm going to do that. So call up your, your representatives on that. Call up senators. I think this is an important bill. Also, education funding. We've, we've had the Claremont decisions. Uh, the first one came down about 15 years ago. We're going to have some language that we'll put on the ballot. Uh, if we can get uh, the Senate to go along with us, that will end that, that controversy. We'll allow the state to go forward without the burden of I was saying we need, we're eventually going to need, need an income tax to pay for what the court's ordering us to do. A couple of important things. Well, I think that people have to keep in mind that, you know, that's, you just can't take it for granted, and we need all the help we can get. And you know, this legislature, well yeah, this legislature, you know, representatives, senators, or, or citizen legislators are close to the people, and we're responsive to the people. But, but folks have to let us know what to do. We think it's good. I'd, I'd like to talk to certainly my constituents and a lot of folks and tell them why it is good. But in the end, we'll listen to, to people. And so call up. Let us know. Well, I think we're about ready to uh, dive into our seafood enchiladas. And again, I wish you could smell it. It smells really, really good. That's coming out of there nicely. That's the one that I wrapped. I think that's <laughs> the one I did. <laughs> Some forks out here. Well, there you have it, everyone. Seafood enchiladas. We're not going to let you watch us eat here, but I want to give special thanks to the Speaker of the House. You guys, big thank enough you. as it is. Thank you. Can't thank you enough for all you do. And of course, his lovely wife, Roxanne. Without her, we wouldn't have a cooking show today because he wasn't going to cook. He wasn't going to be Thank you. But 
Um, Mr. Speaker and Roxanne, thanks again. We'll see you next week, everyone, with another show of The Silver Skillet. Take care.